So a very concerning infringement on the Second Amendment is happening right now. The House has just passed this bill. It's called H.R. 4350, the National Defense Authorization Act for 2022. Now, I believe it still has to go through the Senate and be signed off by the president. I'm sure Joe will sign off on it. The question is whether the Senate will pass this. Now, this bill is extremely concerning because it includes provisions to confiscate people's guns under so-called red flag situations. It's very concerning sounding, so I wanted to cover this here. Now, we need to also remember that the CDC is joining the fight against the constitutional rights of Americans to keep and possess arms. So the CDC came out just a few weeks ago. Walensky, the director of the CDC, came out and she said that there's a public health crisis caused by firearms in this country. Think about how ridiculous that is. The CDC is coming for our guns, trying to evoke some public health crisis. The Center for Disease Control. After decades of silence, the CDC is speaking up about America's gun violence epidemic. People need to know this is unusual for a CDC director to speak like this. It is. I mean, you would think that they've been speaking up for years now, right? I mean, gun violence kills tens of thousands of Americans a year. It's clearly a public health threat. This is her first interview on America's epidemic of gun violence. Can anything be done about this? Something has to be done about this. My job is to understand and evaluate the problem, to understand the scope of the problem, to understand why this happens and what are the things that can make it better. According to a 2015 study, in the United States, an estimated 4.6 million children lived with a loaded and unlocked gun. That number has likely increased dramatically since then. And this was all foreshadowed back under Trump's administration when Nancy Pelosi was upset. She was like, Trump declared a national emergency at the southern border. So she said the next time a Democrat became president, they could declare a public health emergency with guns and take away the guns, which is what Walensky hinted at as well. Uh, because if the president can declare an emergency on something that he has created as an emergency, an, an, an illusion that he wants to convey, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. You want to talk about a national emergency? Let's talk about today, the one year anniversary of another manifestation of the epidemic of gun violence in America. That's a national emergency. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? I wish you would. But a Democratic president can do that. Democratic president can declare emergencies as well. So the precedent that the president is setting here is something that should be met with great unease and dismay. And then, of course, Joe Biden picked Beto O'Rourke to be the gun confiscation czar. O'Rourke has a horrible track record when it comes to upholding the Bill of Rights. So let's look at the details of this bill. This is according to the Gun Owners of America, who do a great job keeping on top of this stuff. The bill's language would create a military court GCO program, a disgusting violation of the second, fourth, fifth, and fourteenth amendment rights of our armed service personnel who offer their lives to defend those same constitutional rights every day. These proposed military court gun confiscation orders could be issued in an ex part basis and therefore would restrain a person from possessing, receiving, or otherwise accessing a firearm without constitutional due process. In fact, the emergency military court GCOs are explicitly exempted from the protection of due process. This is just the foot in the door. If Pelosi gets this into the military code, then it becomes precedent for enforcing gun confiscation against the rest of the population. Seizing firearms first and getting the due process later will never constitute sufficient due process. Now, what's most concerning to a lot of people is that the Republicans join the Democrats to pass this rights depriving bill. Now, I believe they're all playing for the same team, at least for the most part. But a lot of people do feel betrayed. Here's an article by National File. Read the names. 135 Republicans vote with the Democrats to advance red flag gun confiscation bill as part of the NDAA. Republicans fall for the classic Democrat trick 
to include controversial legislation in a bill to fund the troops. Matt Gates, Madison Cawthorn, Elise Stefanik, Devin Nunes, Ronnie Jackson, and Greg Pence, the brother of Mike Pence, as well as Kevin McCarthy. So a lot of people that I have no respect for at all, and even less now. But a lot of people who did have some respect are feeling betrayed right now which I can understand because they were betrayed. So I just wanted to put a quick update out there about this. Let me know your thoughts and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.